Hi everyone, we're um, back again. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say thanks for the hundreds of emails I have received asking lots of questions. A few of you have managed to get it working, like the way I have with uh, mine, and some of you are still having some uh, issues getting certain things to work. Um, the only problem I have just now is obviously I don't have a spare hard drive. I thought I did. I have checked high and low today um, and the ones I do have are either not reading, faulty or making that lovely tick 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 sound which means they're, they're broken obviously. So uh, until I get a spare 40 gig, 60 gig SD hard drive, sorry just a hard drive even would be fine, just a normal SATA hard drive would be fine. Um, I can't really go through the steps by step tutorial again because to be honest I can do it, but I wouldn't like to wipe everything on my hard drive again to start again, if you know what I mean. So if I just got a wee basic hard drive from anyone, I'll need to find out if there's anyone I know that could actually lend me one or just have one lying around so I can then put up a proper tutorial on YouTube. I was planning to do that today, but unfortunately I am unable obviously because I, I don't have a spare hard drive to do so. I think I've given them or used them to fix a lot of laptops I do get on a daily basis to repair screens, hard drives, faults, I don't think I've got any hard drives free kicking about anymore, I think I've used them all so I need to get a new batch ordered in, but in the meantime I'll need to see if anybody has a, a very basic hard drive just to show you how to do a step by step tutorial of how to install Windows 8. There is a few things. Um, that I've came to call, I've been using this for over a month now with Windows 8 and it's very very good. There's a few things I do notice. The Phantom Touches came back after I uh, updated the drivers and believe it or not, without this here, obviously which is the wee box that you plug in, which has something to do with the static, the main charger goes in there. Uh, I don't know what it does but it does make a difference, however, after uh, having that plugged in and using it for quite some time, all I did was move the lid back one day and I got all the phantom touches and I tend to find that if you use both hands on each corner and bend it towards you, it seems to stop the flickering or even close it and then put it back up, it stops if the phantom touches. No, the other way, which nobody really wants to do if you're in the middle of something, is to basically switch off the machine and switch it back on. Um, there is another option which uh, I find quite easy is to plug in a, uh, a mouse or wire Wi-Fi mouse and just go into con Task Manager or whatever you can uh, and try and close down the relevant app and save the what you've got before switching off and switching it back on. Another thing you can do is with the keyboard button, well if you've managed to get the keyboard working, if you double tap that keyboard button it comes up the task manager anyway, to which point if you use the mouse you can just select task manager and task manager will come up straight away and you can close certain certain things um, to get it to stop the phantom put touches and all that, I tend to find that if it's the 64 bit touch um, in fact I'll show you because there's so much point trying to explain it off memory I'll just show you. You'll see that, if I zoom in a bit here, you'll see that you have things jumping in different orders, but if you look at, where is it now? Defined it, there it is. Touch 64 bit, you see how it's using the most 1282.5 megabytes. That causes uh, sometimes issues with touch with the keyboard with the keyboard and anything you're doing up here when that happens you would just double tap the button bring up task manager highlight that end task and then it just I don't know what it does but everything seems to be more responsive the mouse stops slowing down it just stays as it is um, which is a good thing people have also asked about the the skin that I had on before with the icons, I have actually lost that. So what I did was opened up Paint, made a big 
just as big as a paint would allow me to go and just filled it black, saved it as a JPEG and then obviously went into the settings, skin and then just clicked on it, browsed for it but I saved it and hit saved and it obviously gave me the black skin round outside but the one that had all the Acer logo and that, I've sorry I've actually lost that so apologies. Um, to be honest, I don't think there's any other issues I've had apart from it slowing down sometimes, not responding, to which point you just do what I said there, task manager, 64-bit touch, end the task, and then it seems to be fine after that. Um, like I said in my other video, which is annoying me now because I have lost the disc, which is the stupidest thing I could have done, but when I had Windows 7 on this, I made a backup of Applications Driver Software, which was under the Acer Backup Management, or Backup Manager, which came pre-installed on Windows 7 when you get the, the laptop brand new. I used that to create the disk, which has got all the drivers and the software for all this to work. A lot of people keep asking me about the driver. It's not the driver that's operating the keyboard or doing various layouts of the screen, it's actual software. So unfortunately I can't help you again because I can't find the disc. However, I'm going to have a deep look, a good deep thorough look to where the hell it can be because I have no idea where I've misplaced it, but I do kind of need that. Uh, I have had a lot of questions regarding various things on on the laptop. Um, I have found that, my fact, I'll need to show you this because this is and down here. In the bottom left, I don't know if you can see that, we have next to the Opera sign, I've got the device control and Acer. That's something I never really touched on much, but if I tap that just now, obviously it comes up all your bits and pieces, like your, your volume, your uh, brightness and darkness. My fact, that's quite good. I'll darken that a wee bit so you can see it better on the camera. Uh, and also your sliding off the screen, sliding back on, vice versa. Um, I forgot to mention that in my first video, but I've managed to get that working as well again. If I had the disc, I would talk you through the tutorial. Um, to be honest, I apologise um, if you have any other questions about anything. Um, as again, just send me an email. I will try and reply to you as quick as I can, but you can understand I have had, even low it says I've had maybe 284 views or 300 views, whatever. There's a lot of emails, there's probably more emails than that that I have received as about questions and tutorials. And it's just hard for me to have the time to sit down and do a tutorial. But today was an opportunity to have a free moment or two or 15 minutes to do so, and I don't have the risk. So apologies. Um, if you have subscribed, I'll... I'm going to upload this, but any next video that I upload, um, it should hopefully alert you that I've your subscribed YouTube guy, channel, person, me, has uploaded a new video and it should prompt you then to come on and see it, but uh, I can only apologise. And uh, hopefully in the next, probably next week, when we've got probably a week today actually, because Wednesdays is quite a quiet day for me, I should be able to upload another video and hopefully find the disc between now and then and do a proper tutorial. So again, apologies, but uh, I will keep you informed and keep the emails coming. I'll keep answering them and helping you as best I can. Okay, thanks now.